The Beef School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pioneer Hybrid Canada. To find more Beef School episodes, go to beefschool.ca. Hey, it's Jessica Goose with realagriculture.com. Welcome to another edition of The Beef School. One thing cattle producers have top of mind over the winter months is how can they maintain the gains that they made over the spring and summer. Winter grazing can be a challenge and that's where optimal rumen function is critical. Joining me on this episode of The Beef School is Dr. Greg Penner of the University of Saskatchewan and he explains his research between pH levels and rumen function. Uh, it's a little chilly out here. Uh, we are definitely out in a pasture with uh, some cows behind you. And that's what we're going to talk about right now is uh, pH and rumen function. So there was kind of some research that you did in regards to both. Explain to me that. Yeah, so uh, I think if you look behind us, what we have is some cattle that are out grazing uh, swath barley. So it's a common extensive winter feeding system. And so what we're expecting these cattle to do is be able to consume uh, a forage that parts of it are very low quality uh, and parts of it that contain the cereal grain that is a very high quality component. And so the utilization relies on very effective rumen function. And rumen function can be manipulated by many factors. pH is one of them. So if we've looked at the impact of pH and we've shown that low pH decreases fiber digestibility. And obviously that's important when we're talking about winter feeding systems where uh, our beef cattle are consuming mostly forage. So the work we've done focusing on pH and, and uh, rumen function ha- has looked at a number of aspects. It's looked at the impact of uh, how pH impacts the microbes and their ability to digest that fiber. It's also looked at how the cows respond to that low pH. And so we know when pH is too low for too long, we see the microbes have more trouble digesting that fiber. And so we lose some of the benefits that occur with ruminants and being able to utilize low quality forages. Mm -hmm. From the cow perspective, we see that if pH gets too low, we can actually see damage to the gastrointestinal tract. And so this is something we really want to avoid because it can induce an immune response and certainly that compromises the health and longevity of those cattle. Mm -hmm. So how can we kind of, I guess, like reach that pH optimization? Obviously there would have to be some set formula that would be quite tricky to get to, Uh, but how can you kind of achieve that? So feed formulation and ration evaluation has changed a lot over the last 10 years. We now look at fiber in very different ways instead of just looking at the neutral detergent fiber component we start looking at how fast that fiber is broken down, as well as the starch components or other non-structural carbohydrates, as well as how rapidly they're digested. So with current technology on the feed formulation side, we're able to balance the slowly digestible carbohydrates like the forages and the rapidly digestible carbohydrates like the cereal grains and sugars. Mm -hmm. Overall, I guess, what does this mean for like beef production? What we're looking at from rumen fermentation, for for the girls uh, that are out here in the field grazing, we're certainly not going to be worried about the rumen degradable starch to fermentable NDF ratios, but we want to look at the overall diet characteristics to ensure that we're providing enough nitrogen and enough energy so that the bacteria can degrade the fiber and provide energy to the cows so that they're not competing with human food resources and they're utilizing byproducts from cereal grain industries are utilizing low quality forages to produce a very high quality protein product. Perfect. And how would I guess you, how do you measure all of this? Yeah, so in in terms of pH response, there's a number of ways we can measure pH. So we we do at times use rumen cannulated cattle. So these are the cattle that have the window into the new world inside their stomach. And that allows us to measure the pH directly. There's another way that we've developed, and that's by uh, uh, utilizing an orally dosable pH system. So it's like a small pill that we can put inside their mouth. They swallow it, it goes into their stomach, and then we can get measurements uh, from that device without any other uh, changes to the cattle. Mm 